The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community and online store built for engineers and hobbyists alike. Join now and browse the store at element14.com. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, I think that's done it. It's alive! I don't think this was part of my job description. Oh, hello there. Didn't see you. We're just using Felix as our guinea pig to create a fun, spooky Halloween mask idea. We're going to use standard maker parts like microcontrollers, servos, and LEDs to create a cool mask that you can try at home. Let's get started. Amazing builds, exclusive mods, cutting edge ideas, electronics, engineering, and more. Every week on Element 14's The Ben Heck Show. The first thing we're going to build for our scary Halloween mask is the mandible, the mouth. I guess that's kind of redundant. We have these drawings here, which has kind of like a insect-like appendage on it. And we're thinking we could do that with servos. We have a pair of servos here that are identical. And we've rigged up a switch, which can be connected to the wearer's mouth. So by using your mouth, you can cause the fake mandibles to move. So these servos go out, and then when you release the switch, they go back in. Still need to tweak the code a little bit. So what we need to figure out is the best way to attach these near a face and still move in the way that matches these drawings. We've got some aluminum, some balsa wood, and leather and straps, so we should be able to figure it out, right? Yep. All right, let's hash this out. If you need to remove hot glue, put some rubbing alcohol on it and let it sit for a few minutes, the glue will come off. I know, I just hot glue them to your face, you know? Mm. Problem solved, you don't think so? No. Okay. All right, can you run the switch? Let me get these in place. Yeah, I'm a creature. All right, I mean, obviously we have different head sizes and my head is pretty big, but if it fits me, it'll fit anybody. Because my head is big figuratively and literally. Is that right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we could use this aluminum. Is there enough of it? Yeah. Uh, tape measure? Tell me when it's centered on my head. Go right there. Right there? Yeah. All right. The trials of Hercules. And when you're bending metal, you always want to go further than you think you have to go because metal has a memory. See how it springs out? Uh, do we have something roundish, kind of like my head? Uh, oh, yeah. Actually, in my lower leg. <laughs> it's like an English wheel. Most of these materials we got from a hardware store. This is probably from Menards or the craft store. That's from the craft store. Uh, yeah, so it's pretty common stuff. Does that look right? Yeah. So what I was thinking we could do, Felix, is mold this in the general shape, so kind of like that half crescent. Yeah. But then the ends of it bring up into like two parallel points like that. Mm -hmm. Then we can 3D print something to mount onto the servo and then insert this into it. Hey, let's do this. Put a big ass glob of hot glue on there and just stick it in place. Yeah. Ah. This is safe. Okay. Yeah. Hmm, that might be a little. Ah, what's the worst that can happen? Well, I could get burned, I guess. Uh. <laughs> yeah. How did it go? Was it like that? Uh, I think so. Oh, see, only some of that would have hit my skin. Maybe I should have made a mark. Keep holding it in place, it's not completely set yet. Is that good? 
read about that probably. Because yeah. this is an exact science. Oh, I got some in my hair. Ah. ah, well. Overall, not too bad. <laughs> an exact science, yeah. Here's a tip when using hot glue. Put the glue on the least conductive surface first. If you put the glue on the metal, in this case, the metal will sink away all the heat and the glue won't work as well. So we put it on the plastic servo, we put the glue on the plastic servo, then we stick it to the metal. All right, let's see how this looks. So we're gonna put a switch under the chin. So when you talk, it moves for you. Ha, ha, ha. All right, where should it go on my head? What do you think? We're using my head because it's bigger. Right there? Pull it down to get a bend started. Don't worry, you probably won't break my head. But if you do, you can be the new host. Wait, maybe I shouldn't have said that. Okay. All right, now, can you pull this? Just get this out of here. Captain, the tracheon pulse is affecting our warp core engine. I might have to eject it. Make it so. It's kind of fun just building things and having to like do it with computers and stuff. When I was your age, we didn't have the computer net. We had a steam tractor. Ugh. So we're thinking for our creepy mask idea, um, our little bug head would have like some kind of colored eyes. And uh, so I got these, these goggles, these craft goggles, and I, they unscrew like this. And I'm thinking I got this little PVC kind of adapter for something, some hose or whatever. But then uh, I can put those in there so that it sticks out a little bit. Then I got these. Uh, then I got these magnifying glasses. So I can just pop these glasses out or these lenses out and set them down in the PVC adapter. So then we'll set this back down in here. And then Ben's gonna make some uh, dot matrix LEDs that'll sit behind here and it'll it'll blink and look creepy. Now it's time for a tech timeout. You may have noticed it's starting to look a little empty in here. Well, that's because we've been slowly moving to a new location for the Ben Heck Show. We need a little bit more space to put our projects and get better camera angles. So stay tuned, future episode will be in a new location. Yeah, let's, uh, let's start attaching those pieces to the goggles. So our plan is to mechanically build it first and then decorate it with like fake skin and hair and other monstrous features. I think you'll still... <laughs> Have you been drinking tonight, sir? Yeah. Let go, I'll... All right. Wanna make some marks or? Yeah, yeah. We also have to make sure that, can we just put, maybe dab a little hot glue in there just so it won't move? Then we'll use some screws. Just like a little dab on either side. It's got a little tighter. I guess, well, my head's big. Obviously, we're not gonna look through the goggles, but there'll be a mesh here, kind of like a sports mascot, so you can actually see. You might actually see through the mouth. I guess we'll kind of cross that bridge when we get there. The goggles are kind of bringing it down a little bit, Bruce. So I think we need to figure out a way to reinforce it back here. So that's where your strap might come in. Okay, now stick it in place. The best way to build a mask is with it on someone. I mean, come on. 
Uh, okay, so we're gonna put some super Velcro on here and I'm gonna use super glue and the Velcro's adhesive just to be darn sure. We're now trying to figure out a place to attach the switch that will make the jaws go. And we want the jaws to work with jaws. Alien jaws. Alien jaws. <laughs> From the producers of Sharknado comes alien jaws. Oh. Hmm. <laughs> oh well, we'll fix that later. Wait, metal doesn't make that noise when it bends. It doesn't make any noise when it bends. It just bends. Like Beckham. The question is, can you take it off though? Yeah. All right, I think that's a pretty easy solution. I mean, we obviously want to attach it better than that, but mm -hmm. yeah, cool. Let's go with that. I'm gonna use this eight by eight LED dot matrix to make the eyes. I've seen people do this before at Maker Fairs. They take one of these and they usually put it sideways or 45 degrees so you can fill the eye a little bit better into the square. And we have a painted black PCB that we're gonna stick it to and then these are gonna be inside the goggles. And we're gonna drive it with uh, two shift registers per eye. One will drive the column data and then one will drive the active row. The eyes have been wired up. Each eye has a shift register. The first shift register is the data that you want to appear on a single line. The second shift register is what line you want to make active. And then by sending the data you know, rapidly and changing the row number, we can draw a picture using persistence of vision. And uh, this also allows us to do all this with only three data lines, clock, data, and latch. And I've merged our code. So Felix made the code to open the jaws, I made the code to drive the eyes, and it's been merged. So basically whenever the jaws are in motion, the eyes will have a looking forward set state, just looking forward. And then when the jaws are closed, they'll go back into their left and right cycle mode. We were gonna have a uh, optical sensor to see when your eyelid was open and closed, but we think that's a bit too far for this project. We need something simple we can get done in time for Halloween. Anyway, I, did, I drew the eyes with a bunch of binary zeros and ones, and I had to do it at 45 degrees, to actually 45 degrees tilted that way, but you know, it's a pretty reasonable result. It's time to combine all the elements. We finished up the basic structure of the mask we 3D printed these little gray adapters so we can hook up our jaw pincher things to the servos. And we have our completed circuit. So this works as is, we just have to build the mask around it. On a hot summer's night. So yeah, Felix, I was gonna bring in some leftover meatloaf so we can make meatloaf sandwiches, but I didn't feel it was good enough yet, so I didn't. Great story, right? Yeah, I understand. Yeah. I'm gonna get it dialed in. Alien lens is made while you wait in about an hour. Does that actually work? Can you actually get lenses in an hour? Ugh. Let me try, I play too many video games. Ah, oh, there you go. Yeah, that works. There's a battery and a power switch. Both of them we should be able to get at easily. So let's think about that when we mount the circuit board. Oh yeah, those are the, yeah. Remember when we had that canister out the back? Yeah. Of course, if you were like driving to a party that would hit the back of your car seat. <laughs> I wasn't doing anything, officer. <laughs> How much Romulan ale have you had tonight? Let's get. It's a good thing this soup can is clean. Uh-oh. What? Jeez. Well, it's not gonna be all the way into the soup can. Okay. We should be all right. Gonna run all the wiring as flat as possible. There we go. Let's see where they all go. So like the minimum length of these wires, which will probably be the servo wires, that'll dictate exactly where we put electronics can. What if we made a hinge like this, so it was easy to get the stuff and then the gravity would just hold it down? Mm -hmm. um, let's mock it up with some tape and see if there's gonna be enough distance for the cords. I'm just gonna double up this cardstock to make thicker cardstock. Super exciting. 
I go to hotels, tear out the walls. I have accountants pay for it all. I was three years old when I stabbed my first coyote. My daddy's like, you don't stab that coyote, you and that come back in the house. So I did. Man, you can put someone's head in that. Here, let's try. Hello. Ah! Ah! <laughs> awesome. Alex robot activated. We will rebuild you stronger and faster than ever before. You will be a superhuman. Now try that. Okay, close it. You will be the human arachnopede. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna switch you on. Oh, hi. Ah! What's going on over there? Ah. Did you say the psych ward ninja? Cyborg ninja. <laughs> Which is kind of like a samurai cop. It means Japanese sword. Wow, that's a great mask. Did you get that from the Halloween store? Yes, I did. Oh, cool. Wow, the eyes fit perfectly. It's like we didn't even plan it, but it did. So what do you think? We take this mask and blend it into the existing skin that we already added and then cover up the gaps with uh, dungeon hair? Yeah. All right, let's do it. Cool. Trick or treat. The mask is now done. We have our pinchers and they're attached to the main foam using latex and hot glue. So it creates a smooth transition. He's got his hair on, the glasses are in place. We've got some mesh here so I can see, much like a mascot on a football field. And then we have a can in the back, which kind of looks like some sort of biomechanical breathing apparatus, but it's actually what holds the battery and the circuitry. That way there's more room in here for a head. Uh, okay, let's, uh, let's try it out. Let's see here, let's see if I can get my head in this thing still. In the metal, the brass rod goes under my chin so I can actuate the switch. That's all the time we have for today. In the next episode of The Ben Heck Show, we're going to build a replica of the Apple One computer. We'll see you then. pretty bright laser for a handheld. This would probably do some damage to your eye or at least, you know, give you a headache. And this is five milliwatts. So that's not very much at all, or, you know, 0 0.005 watts. Hey, what's the next episode? Try it. Track our treat. I'm worried I'm gonna crush my skull. Are you saying I have a thick skull? What, what, there's how many razor blades in my candy? I can't hear you. <laughs> <laughs> Drago! Oh, wait, no, it'll be Rocky. You do a first blood, not me. Oh, that's right. Felix hears about Alice and I trying to murder each other all the time. I want you to take it off. You should move out to the country. Then you could like just have all the animals you want. But you could have like a pet pig and a pet sloth and a deer and a raccoon, which you could name Raccoon and Raccoonimus. My sister sent me a corgi video on Facebook. You gotta get the man, manables. I'm Samuel. I'm a man. <laughs> Where's my pencil? I'm gonna use it to stab a coyote. The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community and online store built for engineers and hobbyists alike. Join now and browse the store at element14.com. <laughs> <laughs>